Project Management Insights, providing project managers with professional development in the interpersonal skills areas of leadership, team building and communication. Hi, welcome to this Project Management Insights episode titled, Do You Have a Resource Rec? Are you noticing that you have resource gaps? What can you do to secure the resources you need in order to deliver your project? Here's just a few ideas and things that I've actually used myself that have helped me get out of sticky spots with resourcing issues. Go and ask about BAU support. So are there any people in the business who are doing a task or have the, re- have the skills and ability to do what it is that you need for your project. You might find that those people do have spare capacity and are able to help out even on a just a short-term basis in order to get you over the line in a sticky spot. The other thing to consider is part-time resources and this goes hand in hand with this BAU support idea. Are there people in the business doing other roles that could help out your project on a part-time basis? And I'm, I'm here thinking about those, again, those resources within the business that perhaps won't cost you a lot more on your project. Oftentimes there are people with skills sitting around um, that do have some capacity that could help out even on a you know couple of hours a day basis that again might help you out. The other thing you might try is to ask your team or the team project team members if they know anyone with whatever skill it is that you're looking for. You might be surprised how broad their network is around the business. They might be fully aware of other people from within the broader context of the organisation or an outsourcing agency or even the other people themselves that they are aware of who have the key skills that you might need. Sure, you do need to consider the financial aspect of gaining any external people to come in to support you and this is why I'm recommending that perhaps you look around the business first if, if you can because you could get those resources at a lot less cost and or no cost to your project and gain whatever time um, you need and the resources that you need for your project. The other thing to consider is can someone support the low-resourced area in a different way to free up their time? What am I talking about here? Well, is there some administrative type work? As an example, is there data entry work or um, key checking work that could be done by someone else with a different skill set that might free up your developer, programmer or tester uh, in a different way. So, you know, is there someone else or are there other people available on your project team that could help the low resourced area in, in another way that means they get to use their more valuable skills and have more time to use those valuable skills on your project. Now the next thing to consider or to do is to get clear on the priority of tasks. I found this has been an issue often with team members where they don't understand how to prioritise the work that they've been given or the work that they've been asked to do. So someone might have come to them and asked them for something when in fact they have been given to the project as a full-time resource, well, it's important that that person then understands that their priority is to complete the the project tasks first above those other requests. And the key here is to speak to the team member and suggest that if they've got any concerns or issues at all around prioritising the tasks that they have been assigned or the tasks that they've been given to come and ask you so that you can understand a what they've been given and b helping to help them under prioritize the tasks in the correct way for your project the other thing to consider is the the value in putting together a one-page business case on why you need additional resources it might become very clear that for whatever reason you do not have the resources required to get this project over the line in the in the current state that it's in And so it's valuable to 
go and put together that one-page business case of what's the problem, um, what are the options available to you, and your recommendation is that you need this amount of resources for this amount of time and it's going to cost this much, and put that forward as a recommendation to your project control board or your project sponsor. Putting it in writing adds value. They get very clear then on what it is that you're asking for. They understand the cost implications and the time implications, but they also understand the importance of getting resources in a timely manner in order to deliver. And this will show you very clearly whether your time frame is the key aspect of your delivery or the cost. If they won't spend any more money and are okay to let the time slip, okay, not a problem. And then again, if if the delivery time is the key thing and they're okay to throw extra money at it, then you'll notice this as well. So it's, it's a value both ways. The other thing you might do is ask the team and find out what is taking the team's most time. And what I've sometimes done here is I've talked to the team and got them to brainstorm, for instance, if there's another way to do what they're doing. Sometimes this has been valuable because what we've found is they could get some support from someone else to um, take some coding and make a task that would be manual normally automated in a very short space of time and this then freed up their time to do the other tasks that, that was required or you know it crashed the um, task list into a shorter list for them and they therefore had the ability to deliver rather than not being able to deliver. So ask those questions. What's taking the, your most time and is there another way to do what you're doing? The last thing that I could recommend is to play the bumper game. What's the bumper game, you may ask? Well, for me, it's as if I'm riding in a bumper car and what I do is I knock up, knock up against one problem. What do I do? But I speak to the person and I say, what is it that you need to solve your problem? They might tell me that they need somebody else to do something in order to free up their time. So what I then do is I go and talk to that somebody else and I explain to them why it's important that I need them to do what they're going to do to free up my person's time for the project. And then that person might say, well, Lord, they can't do that because they need this. And so I then go and make sure that they have what it is that they need. I call this the bumper game because what it is, it's like bumping up against different um, problems in order to get what I want and that might happen three or four times in order to go back to a place where if I am able to make that one thing back there happen, it then creates a cascade and I end up with what I want for my project. And I found it very valuable. Uh, it made the difference between me successfully delivering and not successfully delivering at one stage when I was being told, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. And all I did was went and described why I, why I was asking for what I was asking for, why it was important, and what could I do to help them get this for me or help me get this. And it was a really great example of... Um, all I needed to do was be able to share what I needed, why I needed it, and then, as I said, the cascade happened. So give it a go. You might be surprised at what happens. Till next time. Thank you for listening to this Project Management Insights podcast. Be sure to visit projectmanagementinsight.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter or to receive updates on upcoming training. You may also find mentoring offers there.